HR issues can kill you. One complaint against your company can turn your world upside down. And you spend way too much time dealing with HR when you should be spending your time on making a profit. You should talk to Bambi. With Bambi, get access to your own dedicated U.S.-based HR manager starting at just $99 per month. They get to know you and your business while providing HR expertise and the personal touch you need and want. They're available by phone, email, and real-time chat, so onboarding and terminations run smoothly. Team members reach peak performance, and your business stays compliant with changing HR regulations. And with Bambi's HR Autopilot, you'll automate important HR practices like setting policies, training, and feedback. HR managers can easily cost 80 grand a year, but Bambi starts at $99 per month. Schedule your free conversation today to see how much Bambi can take off your plate. Go to Bambi.com right now and type in Accelerate under podcast when you sign up. It'll really help the show. Spelled BAM, B-E-E dot com. Bambi.com. Type in Accelerate. Me, 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 but also you. The Pharaoh fast forwards his favorite foreign film. Powder donut. <clears throat> Okay, what's my line? Uh, the only line I see here on the script is get options based on your budget with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. Oh man, that's a tongue twister, huh? I'm sorry, I'm gonna need a few more minutes. <clears throat> bulbous Walrus, the Bulbous Walrus. The Name Your Price tool, only from Progressive. The owl ran afoul of the comatose Coxswain. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Welcome to Accelerate Your Business Growth with your host, Diane Helbig. Diane is a leading small business development and leadership coach, author, and speaker who is passionate about sharing valuable ideas, tips, and techniques with business professionals worldwide. Diane brings you the world's experts and gurus in all things business, whether it's sales, structure, social media, planning, or plateauing, guests bring their expertise and energy to each episode. When growing your business is your focus, Accelerate Your Business Growth is the show to listen to. Got a topic or guest suggestion? Let Diane know. The goal is to make sure you have the information you need to move your business forward. Thanks for joining us. Settle in and enjoy. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. Today's podcast is sponsored by Audible.com. Audible.com is the leading provider of spoken audio entertainment and information. Listen to audiobooks whenever and wherever you want. Get a free book when you sign up for a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash business growth. This podcast continues to gain recognition as a great resource for small businesses, entrepreneurs and sales professionals from people first to proven to inc.com msnbc's your business uh, fit small business a whole bunch of other sites uh, accelerate your business growth podcast is enjoying inclusion on lists of the best podcasts to listen to and while i am very honored that that is the case i am also fully aware that it is mostly because of the guests who uh we bring on. These are folks who have expertise in a variety of areas that have to do with business, and they come on, they give of their time and that knowledge so that all of you can do better things in your business. Today is no different. My guest today is Derek Leto. Derek is the former CEO of International Rectifier and the founder of iSupply, a leading market research firm, which he sold in 2010 for $100 million dollars to global information leader, IHS. He's written two books on entrepreneurship, the latest being Building on Bedrock, What Sam Walton, Walt Disney, and other great self-made entrepreneurs can teach us about building valuable companies. He's currently a professor at Princeton University teaching entrepreneurship, innovation, and creativity. Thank you so much for joining me today, Derek. Oh, it's a great pleasure, Diane. Thanks for inviting me. 
Well, I, I am so thrilled. I the, the subject of entrepreneurship is on everybody's mind. Everybody's talking about it. You know, everyone wants to. Well, not everyone, but it seems like just about most everyone wants to try to be an entrepreneur. Um, and it, it's got its challenges. It isn't necessarily right for everybody. But for those folks who are seriously considering starting a business, what would you tell them um, as far as like important steps that they need to take? Well, uh, you're right about uh, entrepreneurship is uh, something that a lot of people aspire to. Um, polls done of the general American population show that uh, 60% of, of uh, all Americans aspire to be an entrepreneur someday. And, and the research shows that about 50% uh, of the working population will uh, attempt to be an entrepreneur sometime during their working career. So this this is an important subject, and, uh, and it's something that uh, likely will impact almost everybody, if not directly, certainly within their family or someone that they care a lot about. So it's an important subject, and um, and the, the 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 challenge is that. Our fixation today with the entrepreneurs that um, create these billion dollar companies um, in very short periods of time has captured our um, attention, but uh, is, is ultimately not how entrepreneurship really works, uh, not for most people, not for most of how the value gets created in our country and uh, not ultimately about uh, what it takes for most people to be successful. Yeah, <laughs> it's so true. And I'm so glad that you said that because they, they really do. Like, I, I, you know, I have kids in college and they think, oh, I just have to come up with the idea and, and uh, it will go viral and I will be able to skyrocket. And, and they don't even stop and think about, okay, wait a second. Whatever your idea is, there's a process you got to go through and, and there are aspects of things that you have to take into consideration. It doesn't just happen. Yeah. And indeed, you know, this, this um, uh, myth <laughs> that entrepreneurship is about uh, coming up with the big idea uh, and, uh, and now you're asked to come up with an idea that's going to disrupt entire industries is, yeah. um, is wrong. It, it's just uh, bears uh, no relationship to reality because uh, it's not the idea that makes entrepreneurs successful. And in the book, I, I tell the story of um, perhaps you know, the, the greatest idea and invention of the 20th century, the transistor. And the, uh, one of the uh, inventors, William Shockley, um, wanted the transistor to be his legacy. So he went off and um, raised uh, all the money he could ever want, you know, need. And he hired, uh, you know, the smartest people he knew. And uh, they all uh, went off to work um, uh, near where William Shockley's mother lived, which happened to be Palo Alto, California, and the reason why Silicon Valley is where it is today. And um, so here it is, the person that knows, you know, this, uh, most about this great invention, and the Shockley Semiconductor Company never produced a, a single device. And um, <laughs> so the greatest idea is backed by um, all the money and um, resources uh, can produce nothing if they're not uh, led by a person that uh, ultimately cares about the customer and is willing to change themselves to to make their customers happy. Ah. Okay, that, that's so great. Okay, so so what would you say to someone who? had an idea, was thinking about starting a business, um, it sounds to me like their focus should really be on how does this benefit someone as opposed to how can this make me rich? 
Very true. Uh, because the, the, the fundamental principle of entrepreneurship ha has, has not changed throughout history. It's ultimately about making some group of people happy enough that they gladly give you money in return. We try and uh, overcomplicate things with concepts like uh, customer segmentation or value propositions or the like, but ultimately it's all about this fundamental principle. How are you going to make some other people happy enough that they're going to gladly give you money in return? And, uh, and that's what I explore in, in my book, Building on Bedrock, where I describe ultimately the who, what, when, where, and how of uh, successful entrepreneurs, which is making some group of people happy enough to give them money in return. That's great. That's great. I, I often say to people that, that you have to really understand why someone's going to part with money. And that's really what you're talking to. You're, you're not really, people have a, a tendency of talking about their great idea from their perspective, but it doesn't really matter what your perspective is. What matters is why does someone else think it's important? Why do they find it valuable? Why will they part with money for that thing? And if, if you don't know, you're not going to be able to sell it to anybody. Exactly. Uh, this fundamental principle has, has, core implications like uh, what you just said uh, you know it's it entrepreneurship is about a trade it's it's a trade that i'll make you feel happier and uh you'll give me money and maybe feel a little bit poorer but you'll be still uh, ahead in doing that so it's reciprocal and yeah. it's not a one-sided thing and and it and it involves emotions create positive emotions. So it's, it's, it's not a sterile act. The more emotion you can create, more positive emotion, the, the happier customers will be, be, and the more money they'll be willing to pay you. Yeah, yeah, so true. Okay, so if we've got someone listening and they're thinking, well, I think I want to become an entrepreneur, but I don't know how, like, like I, I, is there a way to, for them to know whether it, it's going to be a good idea for them or a bad idea for them? Well, it's, it's, it's essential because ultimately being an entrepreneur could be a dream come true or could turn into a, a nightmare that you can't, you know, wake up from. And ultimately, my, my book uh, is about outlining the who, what, when, and where, and how so that people can then, the reader can understand whether entrepreneurship is a good career option for them or not. Now, the, the single most important criteria that correlates with ultimately being successful as an entrepreneur is your motivation. And you need to have a selfish motivation uh, because it's a selfish motivation uh, that's going to give you your energy to change yourself, <laughs> uh, to... Uh, to position yourself and your product your, uh, to make your customers happy. So it's about having the energy to serve your customers. And, uh, and that ultimately requires the right motivation in order to be able to do day in and day out for years on end. Yeah, yeah, that's great. It, it, it's so interesting. I mean, having that motivation is really what gets people to do things that they aren't necessarily, that, that aren't necessarily second nature, that, that they might not be comfortable with, but they understand they have to learn to be comfortable with it. They've got to be able to do certain things in order for business to come their way, right? I mean, they can't just hang a shingle and go, okay, well, now people know I'm here and I'm great and they're going to buy from me. There's all yeah. sorts of Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Whole perception. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. And uh, ultimately, your your motivation has to be strong enough that you're going to overcome your fears. Maybe it's yeah. fears for asking 
for money in return, or maybe it's fears for uh, feeling judged by how your product and services are received, or uh, per perhaps it's um, your uh, discomfort with working with numbers. And uh -huh. yet, if you don't do your book, bookkeeping <laughs> uh, every day or every week, um, your business will quickly go out of control. So uh, ultimately, you have to have the motivation to change yourself rather significantly. Yeah. <clears throat> I think that, that, that is absolutely a key point. So let's talk about this startup culture that, that we are in. Um, do you think it's something that's here to stay, or is it is it going to flip back around? Is you know is there a trend going here, or is it something that's um, getting ready to burst? Yeah. Well, what's interesting is that most people don't realize that entrepreneurship is actually in decline in the United States. We have really? fewer new businesses than any time in the past thirty years being formed. And the failure rate for entrepreneurs trying to start their own businesses has increased. So it's really not a pretty picture. Uh, and, and I'm ho hopeful to s help sound the alarm here. And, uh, and I'm so glad that we're talking about this. But the, the startup valuations of, of venture capital-backed companies uh, are indeed in a bubble right now because there are uh, more than five times the amount of investment being made in VC-backed companies uh, than ever before. So what's uh, also surprising to people is I mean, here's all this money pouring into you know, uh, companies backed by venture capital, but the number of new venture, back, uh, venture capital backed companies hasn't changed in the past 20 years. So really? it's only 1,400 companies a year that get backed by venture capital. And it has been about 1,400 companies a year for the past 20 years. Now, when you pour five times more money into the same number of companies, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> valuations have to go up. Um, yeah. But that doesn't mean that ultimately when these companies uh, go public, that they'll uh, be able to sustain these very high uh, valuations. And, and we see that with uh, companies like uh, Snap and uh, Box, that were very high profile uh, uh, startups go public and then ultimately lose their valuations when they're traded on the, on the stock exchange. Right. That's really interesting. Wow. Wh okay. Yep. There's so, so many of the pernicious myths are around. Yeah. And it is hurting our, our uh, entrepreneurs. And it's hurting our society because entrepreneurs are uh, the people that bring innovation to our society, they, they create the jobs and the economic growth. And so if entrepreneurship is in decline and we don't even realize it, uh, no, no wonder we're having uh, issues with our economic growth and, and our well-being not being well spread out through our society. Right. Eek. Okay. So uh, what, what, uh, oh, that's so interesting. I'm trying to figure out what we can all do with that. So, so if there's the same number of, these, of, of backed startups, mm -hmm. um, it feels like there's a whole bunch of other startups that are happening that aren't backed by other than the individual's retirement account or, you know, whatever it is. Um, and, and I get it that many of them never make it, that, that, that that's a problem in and of itself. Um, but people who are thinking about starting a business, so what should they do with that information? 
Well, uh, in, in, in the book, uh, I, I describe that there are actually two types of um, entrepreneurs or ways to approach entrepreneurship. Uh, there's the uh, way that we tend to read about uh, through the media uh, where the, the aspiration is to get uh, backing from a venture capitalist and have lots of money to, um, to grow super fast. Uh, but we've forgotten about what I call bedrock entrepreneurship. Bedrock entrepreneurship uh, ultimately is focused more on uh, building a business slow and steady. It's about um, reducing risks and not taking unnecessary risks. And it's, and it's about avoiding failure and not this um, culture of embracing failure as a learning experience where uh, bedrock entrepreneurs can't afford to fail. And, right. uh, and so there are these two different mindsets and the, the, the focus that we've had on high risk entrepreneurship has scared away entrepreneurs uh, who have a great deal to offer to our society, but they uh, have this mistaken impression that unless they're some sort of uh, computer coding savant and an insomniac, that, that they'll yeah. never compete. And so yeah. we have fewer people trying. And then those that try are disproportionately trying the high risk way with the desire to be backed by you know, venture capital. And we have uh, a lot of people that are facilitating this. Um, we have um, angel investors who are, are you know, um, informal uh, investors in, in uh, startups. And they're funding uh, 70,000 companies a year. But most of those, <laughs> only 1400 of those are going to get venture capital funding so we're we're leading a lot of lambs to slaughter yeah here by encouraging people to postpone thinking about profitability and to instead focus on uh, hyper growth as the metric for success i think that's a great point that, that's really interesting. So, so their mindset is in totally the wrong place as far as sustainability goes. Exactly. They're trying to get the quick hit. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. And, 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 and it's, it's through shows such as yourself, your own, that uh, have great influence that we can uh, hopefully get the word out and uh, shift the mindset and, uh, and get more people to feel confident about trying entrepreneurship. Yeah. The right way, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's great. I'm going to take a quick sponsor break, and then I have some more questions for you. Great. Ex Accelerate Your Business Growth podcast is happy to be sponsored by Audible.com. Audible.com is a leading provider of spoken digital audio entertainment and information. They have over 150,000 titles to choose from, and you can listen to them on any device, including whatever you're hearing us on right now. If you sign up at our link, which is audibletrial.com slash business growth. You get one free audiobook and a one month trial of the service. Some examples of books you can listen to on audible.com on audible are The Go-Giver by Bob Berg and Startup Leadership by Derek Leto. Uh, but, you know, Derek is currently uh, a guest on the podcast and Bob has been one in the past. So visit audibletrial.com slash business growth, explore the books that are of interest to you and receive one free audiobook when you sign up for the trial. As mentioned, we are talking with Derek Lido about how to succeed as an entrepreneur. So we were talking before about really focusing on building a sustainable business as opposed to, you know, the fast growth, quick hit sort of thing. And I'm, and I'm wondering if it's still possible to build one of those iconic brands like Ikea or Walmart or Disney, or SAS. Absolutely. It's very possible to build iconic companies today. Uh, 
And most of those new iconic companies, though, will be decades in the making. <laughs> even, even Twitter. So last month, Twitter announced its first profitability. <laughs> and Twitter is 12 years old. And it's just now making profits. Wow. So it would be wrong to call Twitter a quick hit icon just uh, because ultimately they still have to prove that they're a viable company that creates enough value that we want to support it uh, going forward. Now, people like Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, and Michael Dell are classic examples of recent startup leaders that understand exactly what it takes to build a new iconic business. Now, Michael Dell. Uh, ultimately created Dell Computer with a total investment of about a thousand dollars. Really? Wow. Yeah, and because it was inherently profitable, he made he made a, a very decent profit on every computer that he put together in his fabled uh, uh, dorm room, and and then he used those profits to invest back into the business so that he could hire more people or get, ultimately quickly get out of his dorm room and, and uh, rent a building. And so it's through the reinvestment of profits that very uh, uh, successful, very um, uh, robustly uh, uh, built sustainable value producing organizations are created and uh, and, uh, and if companies postpone their profitability because um, it will force them to slow down their growth they 're ultimately making a decision that 's going to um, increase their their odds of failure rather than de decrease their odds of failure. Yeah. Okay. So how do we go about restoring long-term thinking for this, you know, generation of people who are so in the moment and expect immediate results? Well, the first thing that we need to realize is that we're not educating the population about bedrock entrepreneurship, which is the way that 90% 9% of all entrepreneurs will achieve success. So we need our, our press, uh, our politicians and our pundits and people such as yourself to understand this distinction and start talking about it. Yeah. Now, second, entrepreneurship is so critical to our society that we need to actually teach it and teach it in high school so that we prepare everyone to understand a choice that they will likely have to make during their working career. Now, we are fascinated, uh, we can't help but be fascinated by the hundred or so valuation sensations that were created using Iris Silicon Valley type entrepreneurial techniques. But this is a distraction. And as I said, it's even worse, it's what's scaring people away from being successful entrepreneurs. And so just talking about this fundamental principle of entrepreneurship, hey, do you know how to make people happy, happy enough to give you money in return? Well, if you do, maybe you should think about um, uh, starting your own enterprise and, and delivering that happiness because ultimately our society is going to build, benefit from it tremendously. Yeah, I, so I totally agree with you. And I, I think part of the problem that I see being out here in this small business space is that so many of these, um, I'll call them authority organizations like colleges and um, economic, you know, economic development organizations, I don't, they're, I don't think they're really talking about these bedrock businesses and talking about what is possible and doable and where focus should be. I feel like most of them are, are sort of perpetuating this problem because they're teaching 
the come up with the next great thing, fast growth. And, and like I know here in, in my area, there are organizations that that's all they focus on is high tech, fast growth, you know, building those sorts of businesses. And, and it doesn't really do anything for the economy around here or the workforce. But that ends up being what everybody defines as success. In, indeed, it is an issue. And um, I, I, I'm happy to say that, uh, fortunately, my book uh, is, is getting a, a tremendous amount of attention and uh, doing very well because uh, it, people are saying, oh, my God. We, we, we didn't realize, and we did have lost sight of ultimately what entrepreneurship is about, and this this need to build on bedrock and not to uh, just accumulate uh, risks unnecessarily. And um, so, uh, I hope that we can turn around the the uh, the discussion uh, in in short order. But ultimately, as you point out, there are a lot of institutions that need to get the message uh, right. that have lost their way because ultimately uh, they're teaching the students that, uh, and, or, or, you know, in night classes, people with jobs and, and they're, they're um, leading them down a path where their chances of failure are higher than they need to be. They don't understand that they have uh, options here, that there are other uh, ways that, uh, uh, that they could be successful and that those other ways might be the ones that most conform to what their personal motivations are. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so speaking of personal motivations and success, you know, what's your take on success and entrepreneurship? Like from the perspective of, is it a, it, it doesn't sound like it, but is it about wealth or is it about, as you've said a couple of times here, having something that makes people happy. So they, they want to part with money. Right. Uh, well, it's, it's interesting because the, the word entrepreneurship gets bandied around a lot. And, and I talk about, and I mentioned in, in the book, that there, there are all these different definitions and, and each definition has an implied um, metric of success, a hurdle that you have to get over to, to earn this title of entrepreneur. And um, the, the, uh, the the one that is implied in uh, a lot of the uh, um, popular writing on entrepreneurship, uh, particularly those that there's talk about uh, disruption and um, and uh, you know taking taking over uh, uh, you know entire um, industries with your idea and, and shooting for the moon and um, and raising lots of money. Um, and, and those uh, mindsets necessarily uh, uh, require that uh, you take the end customers out of the equation. <laughs> and uh, it's not about their happiness, it's about how many can you collect, you know, how many hits yeah. or the like. And, um, and so we, we, we've, we've taken the bedrock portion out of entrepreneurship and, and really focused solely on this uh, risk everything uh, a mindset, which uh, is not a good thing for most people. And indeed, you know, it's, it's why a lot of people are scared away from, from, from trying now, uh, in spite of the fact that they have... Um, very great things to, to offer other people. Yeah. Um, uh, so the, the um, 
for, for bedrock entrepreneurs, uh, wh where they are motivated to make a group of people uh, happy, their customers, and they, and they get personal satisfaction from it, uh, they're the ones that can um, uh, take uh, 10, 20 years to build a super valuable business that becomes iconic in their, in their field and are, will feel tremendously personally satisfied by doing so. And they're not gonna be looking at their stock price or their, what was their, the valuation on their last round or, or uh, feel um, that, uh, that just because some other uh, startup is, is getting more attention than theirs because it's growing faster means that they're a failure. Uh, that they're the ones that ultimately are, are going to create the companies uh, that uh, we'll be talking about, hopefully when we get together 10 years from now. Interesting. This is so, it's so valuable because I, I agree with you. I think there are so many people who have been scared away because of just this perception or this belief system that that's all you really hear. And so it, it, you know, it's what's nice about having you on here to talk about the bedrock because it, it gives some people hope that um, what they originally thought was true and that if they can let go of the noise and, and like not listen to it, as long as they are willing to prepare themselves for a long-term process, um, they can be successful whatever that definition is for them, but it's not going to be, you know, skyrocketing to the moon because that's not realistic. I mean, that doesn't really happen. And, and you don't need to, to do it all in one step. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And you have to stay in, um, in tune to your customer. Right, you know, always, that always has to be at the forefront. And what your customers wanted last week and made them happy may be slightly different than what's <laughs> going to make them happy this week or next. So, so yeah. this isn't something that you do once. <laughs> right. You find the magic formula. This is something that you're doing constantly. Yeah, that's a great point. It's so true. Yeah, it's a living, breathing thing, and you have to be paying attention all the time. Yeah. And, and if you're motivated to, to do this, then it's enjoyable. Then you're right. getting positive satisfaction. Now, it might not be the instant gratification type of happiness. It's the more long-term sense of well-being that drives long-term action and that makes us feel as if um you know we're 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 here for a reason and uh we're doing what we uh we're we're put on this planet to do yeah 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 it feels like it's more of a mission than just a startup yeah, the startup is the vehicle. Yeah. The startup is um, what our, our government and society has, has created a structure for us to uh, facilitate uh, getting uh, lots of people or some people involved as employees and as customers. And so we have these uh, ways that we can organize legally and, uh, you know, uh, not have to be personally liable for, for the debts of our companies, which uh, helps, has helped facilitate entrepreneurship in our country uh, so effectively over, you know, uh, more than, well more than a hundred years. And, um, and so, uh, but ultimately it's the structures there for individuals to leverage that, 
to enable them to deliver their ideas, their innovation, their, their, their uh, products and services that they can recruit other people to help them um, deliver to, you know, hopefully more and more customers because they, who, who doesn't want to be happier? <laughs> Good point. Absolutely. So is there anything that you think is missing from the entrepreneurship support ecosystem? Well, um, there, there's a significant amount of uh, educational support that we could be giving or, or uh, adjusting our educational support and our programs to be giving uh, in a more effective way to people that are interested in entrepreneurship. So as you were mentioning, um, we, we uh, unfortunately invite, you know, people to, uh, you know, uh, apply for accelerators and incubators and uh, all of these vehicles, um, uh, night, night classes on entrepreneurship uh, to, to learn about this. Uh, because we're fascinated, and then we tell them uh, it's all about uh, shooting for the moon and, and using other people's money when, when in actuality, uh, that's not going to be the right way for 99% of the people that uh, attend those classes. So we're yeah. distracting them and, you know, even worse, scaring them away from, um, from trying um, and certainly leading a lot of uh, lambs to slaughter here. Um, and so, so we, we need to get back, uh, the, the, to what the data shows is creating and has created a value in our society. And, um, so we need, uh, you, you and your listeners to understand this, uh, not just once, but hopefully uh, have other people on, on the show to talk about this. Um, we need to have more books written, not just my, my book, Building on Bedrock. Uh, we need to have people write articles for Inc. and, and Entrepreneurship Magazine. Um, uh, there's a lot of work to be done. Uh, ho hopefully this is, sounding the, uh, the opening shot in what will be, uh, you know, a, uh, a revolution to get back to yeah. <laughs> uh, our, our core beliefs on, uh, on entrepreneurship. Yeah, boy, I, I'm so with you on that. I really hope so, because there's so much good that can happen um, as long as people are getting the information that they should be getting, as opposed to being, being told things that just really are not the case. So, so talk to me some about the book. Um, what inspired you to write it? What do you want people to know about it? Where can they get it? You know, just yeah. tell me everything. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I wrote this book because I was disturbed about the misconceptions surrounding entrepreneurship and what it takes to be a successful entrepreneur. Uh, that these, you know, misconceptions around shooting for the moon and using other people's money cause uh, these entrepreneurs to fail unnecessarily and cause aspiring entrepreneurs, people that are thinking about entrepreneurship who have great things to offer uh, to be scared away and not to pursue what could be a, a great dream come true for them. And all of this, you know, resulting in a decline in entrepreneurship in our society. And uh, I felt I needed to do something about it. Uh, I, I've studied this uh, in, in great depth and, uh, but, um, but I wanted to, to, to write a book that ultimately people would love to read. Uh, so a book that uh, wasn't a textbook. So, so I wrote this book uh, by telling stories, stories about entrepreneurs, uh, famous ones, 
and uh, not so famous ones, but ones that uh, all together illuminate, you know, the who, what, when, where, and how of entrepreneurship so that everybody after reading the book gets a real strong sense of whether this is the right thing for them. And the stories about um, Sam Walton and Walt Disney and Estee Lauder and, uh, and uh, this entrepreneur uh, whose name is Vidal Herrera um, barely um, completed high school. Uh, his, uh, uh, he grew up in a in, uh, super poor family in the barrio in East Los Angeles. And, um, and he, uh, to, to, he, he wanted to take the jobs that were, um, he didn't need you know, schooling, uh, but he could earn a decent wage. And he heard that if you um, uh, deal with the dead people in the morgue, you're going to make, uh, you know, the highest hourly rate because nobody wants to deal with dead people. So he goes off and he learns how to deal with dead people. <laughs> and uh, he, he catches the attention of the, um, the coroner uh, who... Um, you know, uh, tutors him in how to uh, create autopsies. But uh, unfortunately, uh, Vidal is, is injured. Uh, he, he crushes some of his uh, spinal discs and, he, and he's put on disability, but it's not enough to support his family. And so he's desperate. And the only thing he knows how to do is uh, do autopsies. And so he ultimately creates the business of private autopsies uh, with the company 1-800-Autopsy. <laughs> and it's such an inspiring story. Um, and, it's, and it's such a great illustration of if you have something, and it, hey, there are a lot of people, ways to make people happy, you know? It's, it's not only by selling them candy, you know? <laughs> but helping them understand why their loved ones passed away unexpectedly. Right. A lot of peace and comfort. Yeah. That's and so they great. created a, a new industry in doing that. Wow. That's crazy. I love that story. That, that is so great. Um, so how do people get the book? Where can they find it? Well, the, the books, um, available in, in most bookstores uh, online at uh, all the, the usual places like Amazon and uh, also walmart.com is, uh, is featuring the book. Uh, Audio, Audible has my first book, um, Startup Leadership, and ho hopes to uh, have my second book here very shortly. Um, so, uh, it's it's widely um, uh, available. It's uh, selling very well. So I think uh, all the bookstores are going to want to keep it in stock. And um, also, uh, listeners can um, learn more about this by coming to my website, uh, DerekLido.com, uh, D-E-R-E-K-L-I-D-O-W.com, one word. And uh, I have a lot of additional um, uh, little short pieces, and extra explanations. I have some charts and uh, some posters there to download for free to, to help people understand uh, how this all fits together. That's and, terrific. And, uh, so, so I'm also very good at answering my emails and uh, a lot of um, uh, people have have uh, asked uh, for me to explain things further or help them sort through some of their um, uh, trade off personal trade offs, and I'm happy to do that as well. Oh, that's great. Well, thank you, and th I mean, just thank you for all of that information, and thank you so much for for spending some time with me explaining this. I so agree with you. I think this is a huge issue that really needs to be addressed and so i'm grateful that you wrote the book and are here and and you know hopefully in other places just 
you know, sounding the bell about this so that people can really realize that they they can be successful at entrepreneurship if they um, pay attention to it the right way. So just great. Thank you. Well, thank you, Diane, for inviting me to talk about this and uh, sort of to uh, raise the alarm. And uh, I hope uh, to uh, cross paths again very soon and to uh, if there's anything I can do to to help you with your entrepreneurial endeavors and your great, great podcast. Uh, feel free to um, call on me at any time. That's awesome. I sure will. And I always like to thank the listeners uh, and our sponsor. Visit um, audible. Uh, I'm sorry, audibletrial.com slash business growth to sign up for a free trial and get a free audio book. And please uh, get pick up this book and read it. Whether you are thinking about entrepreneurship or you are already an entrepreneur, uh, you know, the, the information in this book is inspiring. So if you're already an entrepreneur, it, it'll just give you some more of that juice that, that you had when you started um, to know that you're on the right path doing the, the right thing for you. Uh, and as always, continue to prosper and be curious. And until we meet again on another episode of Accelerate Your Business Growth, goodbye and good day. Great careers are forged out of great relationships. Your success, whatever your field, relies and thrives on the support and insights of others. I'm Andy Lapata, an author and speaker on the power of professional relationships. In the Connected Leadership podcast, I have the privilege of interviewing people from around the world to understand the relationships that have made a difference on their journey and how their insights can help you. From Nobel Prize winners to Olympians, from NASA astronauts to peace campaigners, my guests have shared some captivating moments from their lives and careers. Combined with experts from leading universities, cutting-edge authors and giants of business, the Connected Leadership podcast aims to inspire, educate and entertain.